All right, um, I also do triathletes and I'm a master drawer. That doesn't mean I'm good, it means I'm old. <laughs> so, but yeah, so Queen Bridge. Um, all right, so what we're talking about today is what we as people um, can do when nobody's going to come help us. And the reasons nobody's going to come help us can be things like this. I don't know how, has anyone had to call 911 from their house before? Yeah, I mean, they get there pretty quick, right? Like less than 10 minutes. Unless you live right on high, off high school road when school's getting out. <laughs> yeah. Starting. yeah, yeah, I can see that. That would be bad timing for your emergency. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one reason. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we'll never have to deal with this in our lifetime. But there are lots of potential causes for um, EMS and emergency services not to be responding in the speed we're used to. Um, I think we have one of the fastest response times for heart attacks. Um, it's like Seattle equivalent. Um, so that's because all of our fire trucks carry um, AEDs, and so it's really amazing. Um, Hopefully heart attacks will be the bottom of our list of worry um, if we have a big earthquake or something, but obviously that's on there. So, yeah. So EMS, and these, yeah, you pull, I was pulling stuff out of there. Um, you know, it would have to be pretty bad for us not to get an ambulance to cover our house. Anyways. All right. Um, so potential disruptions could just be as easy as a windstorm. I mean, if you don't have a phone and your cell tower's down, it, who knows how long it'll take to get an answer or to get through. Um, so it doesn't have to be like the biggest earthquake ever. Um, but anyways, so potential reasons for problems and why we want to know how to take care of ourselves and our families and our neighbors are up there. And if there is a huge earthquake and a major disaster, we're not going to be a primary focus. Like your house is, unfortunately, even less the president's living there, you know, you're not going to be number one. It's going to be the larger populated buildings and areas. So schools, if it's during the day, are going to be major and then it's just a living and um, all that stuff where there's a lot of people. And then if things really get bad, as we all know, because we're here, because we've been listening to um, all this emergency preparedness stuff, it's going to take a while for them to get to Bainbridge. You know, they're like, oh, they're fine. They've got money, they've planned ahead. We'll get to them in a couple of weeks. So um, <laughs> medical supplies are also on that list of stuff you want to have stacked up, not just food and water. Just in case. It could not be for you, it could be for your neighbor who falls and breaks their leg trying to you know, dig a pit latrine or something. Um, so, and then the hospital. Yeah, it's here. Oh, I know. Let me gently move this. So, uh, <laughs> be careful. <laughs> oh, she worked hard to get this. So. Okay. There we go. If anyone else comes in, it just. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, hospitals, you know, who knows? At least for Bayridge, and theoretically, we can motorboat to Seattle if there's a good hospital situation there. But at least for the meantime, the Medical Reserve Corps that we're trying to help get started is planning on having like a tertiary hospital-ish type mash unit on the island if we need it, you know. I mean, you never know what's Do you have happen. a place yet? No, but we are negotiating. So, so different from the hubs. The hubs will bring patients back there. Uh, yeah, because there's no, it's not currently designated, but we're working on it. We'll get there. I think you point the clicker to the computer. Some of the arrow keys, up and down arrow keys, probably would work. Yeah. No, just on the oh. keyboard. Try the up and down okay. arrow keys. Sorry, right, guys. Keyboard. This is all day I just see patients that do not get PowerPoint in them, so. Where they are. Okay. No, well, it's not. Okay. you can just tell it's us. It's okay. I'll just tell you. Just tell us. Um, okay. I got my hand. Okay. So. After this, it basically says um, things you can do to learn more. So in, in, in your handout, it also includes it. So we talked about first aid classes and CPR classes. The fire department definitely has them pretty often. Um, first aid classes are less often, so we're going to try to get more of those. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, because CPR is great, but in, in a disaster, it's hopefully no, it's bleeding. Yeah, it's bleeding, it's broken bones, it's lacerations. Right. So that's what we're going to talk about today. 
and I have really good pictures of it, but it's okay. Um, so. Damn. All that blood. I'll miss it. I can we go get the guy? Uh, yeah, sorry. we can go get the guy. I'll, I'll hold that picture. Okay. What's, his, what's his name? The Scott. John. Or I'll John. go call him on my cell phone. Okay. <laughs> They're going to be like, she's the worst. Never have a back. Well, we just shouldn't. Oh. Move. We have to do a couple of them. All right. Um, okay. So, other ways you can learn, as you see, um, CERT is a great program. They're not a training right this second, but there will be sometime in the next few months, I think, on Cambridge. And what do they do? They do basically like night at night once a week for six to eight weeks, I can't remember. It, yeah, it depends on how they do it, but it is like the last one that was on Bainbridge Island was every Monday night for six weeks in a row, and then there was a double one when they did on weekends when they did all the first day weekends. It's community emergency response. Oh, yeah. What did you do? Well, I wonder if I'm sure that's what they do. Oh, what did they do? What? Who sponsored you? What, 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 what did you do? Um, I resume the slideshow. I guess. Yeah. You just go online. Uh, good. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't, these aren't like publicized um, estimates, but the estimates that have been created for Bay Ridge and the Ben Hood Big, like Seattle Quake, um, mm -hmm. Seattle Fall Big underneath Bay Ridge Ben Quake, are a lot of damage. And that includes 9,000 people. Injured. It doesn't mean like horrible, like go to the hospital injured, but 9,000 where you have something wrong, and 3,000 requiring medical care. So that's why we need the hubs, that's why we need the tertiary centers, and I mean the death stuff is bad too. Um, but 3,000 people requiring medical care is what we're kind of thinking about when we're thinking about medical um, support for each other. Those figures seem low to me. Yeah, it's it's a like not to scare people. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's based on, um, they said it was based on middle of the day in the winter. Um, thinking that that would be the worst because people would all be in mm -hmm. schools and yeah. work. No tourists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah. 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 That would add a lot of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> 10,000 tourists. So, who knows? This is just some estimates. Um, all right. Yeah, we talked about that. And they just had a talk before this about Dr. Neighborhood. Have people done that here? Yay. Okay. It's fantastic to start with one of the things I'm talking about, which is getting to know your neighbors and who has skills and who has needs. Um, and then the Wilderness First Responders is a course coming up shortly. October. Okay. It's a big commitment because it's a week of during the day. Um, but, you know, even if your map your neighborhood group says, hey, you need to go do that so that you know stuff for us and then you can work at the hub after you help your neighbor. So. Stop the Bleed, I haven't seen any courses around here lately. There's like a day once a year where it's like, Stop the Bleed day, but they do sometimes. Virginia Mason was offering that, and I tried to get into it and wasn't able to. So I talked to Jared, Deputy Chief yeah. at the fire department, and he said, I've got um, like 30 of my, I didn't know they had that many, so probably not. Okay. I have a bunch of my firefighters take that course, and they will be offering it. He said in the last class, class that they, cool. they, they just don't have to do that, but they're okay. coming. So stuff, do you guys know what that is? Stop the bleed. Yeah. It's basically about how to, to manage that. No, 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 I just was in the previous course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you see stuff with this, like, advertised, look into it, because mm -hmm. you're interested in first aid anyway. And um, today is just a way big, like, quick overview, but they will really go into detail, like, how to put on that tourniquet right, and all the stuff you can use to do it besides actual tourniquet. Okay, so in the handout is just my list. Like, this is just a doctor you know making a list. That's me. Um, and this is what's in my kits. So, basic stuff. Um, this is not what comes in a lot of those to target. I mean, I don't know. You can look at it, you can supplement. That's what I do. So, take a kit, it has a lot of stuff, and then you add things to it that you think are important to you. So, feel free to add to this in any way you so choose. What do you mean by cleansing agents? So it can be as simple as like water. Um, we honestly use just a lot of water in water. urgent care. Um, so it could just be having pretty clean water. Um, in the event of an emergency, ideally it would be nice to have really clean water, like saline, sterile, but it doesn't have to be. As long as it's not visibly gross and yuck that your dog drank out of water, it's probably better than nothing. Um, What's burn ointment? So it's basically antibiotic ointment. I mean, there are fancier things, but antibiotic equipment will do just fine. Or like bacitracin or... Yep. Yeah. Uh, triple antibiotic. Triple, yeah. And, you know, hopefully not five years expired, like 
my kids that I just looked at. <laughs> Actually, a great burn on this preparation age. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. It's got yeah. kind of cortisone. Um, yeah. <laughs> Favorite stuff, but yeah. headlamps. Yeah. So headlamps, you don't think of that. It's definitely not in the kids you buy, but it's you know sometimes it's dark or dim or the yeah. power's out and yeah. you can't see what you're doing. So I have headlamps like everywhere um, in my car and house just because they're not that expensive. You can buy them bulk, mm -hmm. and I love them. <laughs> so it seems like you should have extra batteries in that list then. Oh, that's true. Yeah. 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 Solar yeah. chargers. Yeah. Um, and scissors <laughs> and things like that. These are great. You can get these kind of industrial sort of emergency scissors that all the EMTs carry. A lot of this is available on Amazon or other like just medical supply websites, and you don't have to be a medical person to buy stuff as long as it's not a prescription. So I use a veterinary medicine a lot. Things be cheaper. I live in a condo situation, and we are setting up, and one of our people on the team suggested the trauma first aid kit mm -hmm. what would that be? yeah there's 35 units so like one kit for the whole for the whole thing. i don't know exactly which trauma first aid kit they're talking about but it would probably have a lot of things i like like tourniquets and slings and okay. you know yeah. some splinting material which definitely isn't normal you know, the, the military uh, emergency kits are pretty comprehensive for sure <coughs> six to eight hundred dollars oh. that they've got oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking yeah. Of. yeah if you have a big one that you share that would yeah. Make sense. yeah yeah we're neighbors so we yeah. can go back and forth about this. I did a woofer training with um, some like military people in it and it was awesome because yeah. as soon as someone was they're like tourniquet the, and they all just carry them like so they just have the like, <coughs> kit and they put it on like two seconds like go oh. We need to practice so back away. <laughs> um, but they're really good at it out there. And they've all used them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, medications are also handy. Um, this isn't like for long term use, obviously. If someone comes with high blood pressure, you probably won't even know. Uh, you may not have a blood pressure. Uh, but for first aid, if you're having these issues with your friends, family, neighbors, people will really like you if you have a pain reliever of some kind. Um, these are non prescription things. You know, ibuprofen, Tylenol, um, but prescription stuff, as a doctor, I had a whole stash. So, you know, we can't all drink opium juice or from the poppies. we got to have a little plan for pain relief, you know, in case somebody breaks their leg. Um, so if you have dental work and it's five years expired and you know what safe way to store your stuff, feel free to do it because that stuff does not become toxic. It just gets a little weaker. Um, but sort of safe storage is key, and you know, I'm not a fan of kids getting old. What about splint sizes? Um, splints are, I wouldn't overthink. Okay. Um, you can make a splint out of anything. Yeah. yeah. Um, if it's for like a week, yes, it would be nice to have a real splint. Mm -hmm. um, but you can make it out of cardboard, mm -hmm. um, just fold it. Okay, magazines. It. Yeah, yeah, magazines, I brought newspaper. Um, newspaper. Um, okay. They have those official like orange cool ones that you can like mold. And make yeah. into an arm size or a leg size. Yeah. And those are nice to have. I didn't bring one, but um, you learn about that. But you can really use anything. You can even use clothes. You can just roll it up and kind of mm -hmm. wrap around and make okay. it anything stiff. Um, and then prescription medications, your own, your family members, like it's nice to have a little bit of a month um, saved up. So sometimes doctors are cool with that, depending on what it is. You know, say, I need an extra month of blood pressure medicine. I don't want to be out for a month. But also, um, Antibiotics, and I think in there it lists some I suggest. Um, it's good to have advice, so you know, feel free to talk to people who know things that they're in your neighborhood. If you know the nurses, like which one's actually good for this problem? But this is really if you just can't get a hold of anyone, and it's been a couple days. You're like, wow, that looks infected. All right. All right. Talk about that. Antibiotics last for a while. I mean, if you were to get a just in case yeah, prescription. Yeah, you know, I, we in medical land, we know we don't we can't prescribe you expired stuff, and the pharmacy won't give it to you. But we all feel comfortable using two to three year old stuff in real life. Um, and there is a stockpile that the U.S. has, and they've had scientists go in and actually secretly tell them how long things can last, and it's really long. But the FDA 
you know, doesn't isn't cool with that, and drug companies are not cool with it because they want you to keep buying all that stuff over and over to restock. So, kind of have a three-year window in my mind before I get new stuff for my pack. Okay. Yeah, one three of the years past. One of the places. Well, I know that some people also in the medical industry collect that and send it off to other countries. Other countries. Yeah. 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 And I used to work in a homeless clinic. They probably wouldn't let you do anymore, but they would, yeah. we were like, perfectly good. it's old, but it works. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's free. <clears throat> so, say, you know, say there's an earthquake and you run downstairs and your the adult son is lying there with his leg looking like this. What would you want to know? Like just blood flood? Mm -hmm. well, just start shaking. Bleeding. Yeah. Bleeding, yeah. Um, something, Broken. how to happen. You know, what, do you remember what happened? You know, and like what fell on you or did you fall? Check for him. Yeah, what else mm -hmm. What else is hurt? If you got one injury, are there more? I mean, yeah. And worse. Yeah. <laughs> I know, you're like, oh, were you unconscious? Do you remember this happening? Um, can you walk? All right. So if you can walk, what's a good chance it didn't happen? No Broken right. 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 So that's a good sign. Um, so yeah, I mean, usually it's not this purple immediately, but if you hit a vein, it might be. Um, a lot of times it's just you know, scrapes and bruises, and then it starts to look ugly in an hour. Um, and yeah, stuff can be hidden. So you want to feel it, well, you know, if it's your family, just touch a bit. And if you have gloves, that's cool too. Just feel it and see if there's anything obviously wrong underneath, like bone poking up. Um, but if they can walk and they remember what happened, that's at least reassuring. And then if you have it, especially if this is just after the power goes out, what can you put on here Ice. to make it feel better and also decrease the swelling? Um, and then these, I mean, everyone should have like five of these suckers, but we just love them. Um, they're great for putting the ice around there and just for compressing uh, the area to keep it from swelling up big. And then if you can, just have them elevate, right, because it's going to get more swollen. Um, contusions are probably one of the most common things we're going to see. Yeah, so we talked about that. Abdominal pain is just, if they have bruising up here, I mean, how bad, you know, is it? And if there's internal bleeding, I don't know, it's going to be rough. Like, you don't know for sure. You just kind of have to watch them. And yeah, we're not going to puncture them. You drag into the hub, right? You're like, ah, help me. They'd probably um, rather go to the pub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully we don't have to pub. Right. Oh, that keeps I'm getting, like, emails on here. It's in my computer. Okay. okay. So yeah, um, if it's open wound, you know, if there's scrapes and abrasions, you want to wash them really good. Um, cover it, put ice on it, and then check it every day at least, because it could change. You could get infected, or you could get a blood clot. And you know, Most blood clots that are superficial, just as an aside, aren't dangerous. It's the ones you don't really know for sure, and the whole it's leg swells up. That's when it's scary. Mm -hmm. I guess you start giving a mass for and they're like, yeah, is, any, is anything open yet? Can we bring him in? Mm. Um, but yeah, the superficial ones, they look ugly. I mean, has anyone had like a bad, like mm -hmm. hit in the head or something? Those are, whoo, alarming. Or like when you get kicked. Yeah, by, yeah. right on the shin, yeah. right on the bone. And then it hurts for you know, a long time. But it's not dangerous, it just hurts. That's why we need that old dental medication. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so say instead of that yucky bruise, you see this um, when you run downstairs. What do you want to know? Did you lose consciousness? Yeah. Yeah. It's a head injury. Um, it, you can't tell there, but is it just a little bit of blood, or is this like you just took the, you know, is it pumping all over the place and bleeding mm -hmm. like mad, or is it just still leaking? Mm -hmm. Usually it's going to bleed like mad, at least in the beginning. Yeah, heavy. Don't have wounds bleed like they crazy. Are crazy are gross. Gross. Yeah, yeah, just blood all over your face. But they don't pump, they just, yeah. Yeah. they just put out a lot of blood. Yeah, yeah. just keep yeah. pouring, and it's all over your eyes, and you look head. like murder. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you want to be able to see what you're dealing with. So, how big is it? How deep is it? Can you see the skull? You know? Um, and it did they lose consciousness? So, um, yeah. How do you, let's see. Um, wound infection is probably not a worry right away, obviously. But it, if you want that's why you want to check a wound every day until it's healed to make sure it doesn't start looking bad. Um, and then in the other injuries, like is their head misshapen? <laughs> um, so yeah. So I'm just kind of went too far, but stopping bleeding. I mean, what would you guys use at home? Pressure. Pressure. Anything. Pressure. Yeah, Pressure. dish cloth. I mean, hopefully yeah. not full of cross no. dish stuff. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, something clean. It doesn't have to be sterile, just something clean. Um, and you can even use your shirt. Honestly, it's better than nothing if you're out in the 
campground and this happens. Um, stop and bleeding because it's yucky and gross and scary and bloody and helps you see, but also because you don't want to lose too much blood. It's a lot of blood from the wound. Anyone have any idea what would make the bleeding even worse? Like if someone's on certain medication? Aspirin. 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 Yeah. And so, yeah, has anyone dealt with that before? I don't know. I had a guy almost die from a bloody nose because he, it wouldn't stop. And that's in a whole other thing. But just so much blood when you're not able to clot. So hopefully, or for isn't it? But you might have to hold it for a long time. Was that Coumadin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But you want to, um, yeah, you just hold it. And it might be 15, 20 minutes of pressure. And they can hold it if they're not unconscious. But um, just Is it will eventually stop, even on a blood thinner. Is that what you did to stop it was this pressure? Um, and then cleaning it. So once it stops, not while it's gushing, but once it stops, kind of, you can kind of pour water over it and rinse it and clean it because that's really helpful for preventing infection. Um, it doesn't have to be special stuff. In the, honestly, in urgent care, sometimes the hands will just hold on to the sink. I mean, our water's good here. So I have a question about the direct pressure, though, because yeah. I've heard that it. And I tell me if this is true still. So mm -hmm. Some people I've heard in the past have said, let it bleed for a minute because the blood is actually helping clear out the wound and then apply it. Yeah, and yeah, we don't blood. care about that. We'll wash yeah. it later. Yeah. Okay. And there's, you know, can't replace the blood. Yeah. Okay. The so just go right for it. Yeah, just go for it. They'll be calmer. They'll be calmer. There's so there's, um, <laughs> the military actually has blood, uh, uh, yeah. you know, the clotting, oh, the clotting factors yeah, that they cool. can apply on the outside. Is right. that coming yeah, into play okay. anywhere in first aid yet? Uh, we don't use it in the hospital. Um, I don't know. Like They just, know, at this yeah, you can get it on place over here for the W, the, the Wilderness Warfare yeah. guys, yeah. showed me a combat uh, oh, boss that had a blood, had a uh, squatter cool. in it. Yeah. 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 And they yeah. said it's for sale on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. and REI. Hmm. Yeah, it's REI not cheap, um, but it's really cool. Um, and yeah, I didn't put that on my list because unless we can't afford like a $30 bandage. But yes, it was awesome and cool. And the military keeps coming up with new stuff that we can eventually use in the civilian world. So yeah, that would help, but you still want to do pressure too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, they're talking about gunshots, so they can put that in a gunshot and it'll mm -hmm. stop bleeding eventually. Like, which is crazy cool, but hopefully we won't have to do it. What about cleaning with isopropyl alcohol and also hydrogen peroxide? Good. People always want to do that. Um, we don't need to. Yeah, it's I use that to kind of wipe down areas a little bit, but it's not like directly into the wound. It hurts like a mother, and it kills tissue. It's a little damaging mm -hmm. tissue. Yeah. What's that? So, uh, alcohol. Oh, alcohol. Yeah. And hydrogen peroxide definitely eats away tissue. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, so stitches, I wouldn't do this unless you've done it before. Yeah. Um, but I do sometimes teach a suturing class for like non-medical people um, down at the VI Outfitter. So if anyone's really ambitious and wants to, you know, say, oh, I'm going to make my kids let me sew them up next time. Wouldn't advise it. But um, people use it a lot for like well, wildlife, like their livestock. Like when their sheep get injured, they'll staple them up or sew mm -hmm. them. So that's what comes to my classes. Mostly. It's definitely not a licensing. Like you're not official. Once you've done it, it's just for you, not to run around stitching strangers. You will get sued. Okay. Um, advantages. So even if you can't close it out, you just got to cover it because you don't want it to get infected and you want to decrease mm -hmm. bleeding. If you have antibiotic ointment or even Vaseline. Vaseline is really my favorite um, for wounds because it doesn't irritate. Sometimes, sometimes people are allergic to antibiotics. So when you're putting mm -hmm. in their wound and then they get inflamed and you know, oh. um, So Vaseline is just a great thing to have. You can also use it to start fire. Um, <laughs> A fire starter with cotton ball, Vaseline, burns like crazy. Um, sure, it's all I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 that was the petroleum. And then, yeah, you can use whatever you have just to, to kind of close things up. I, if you have no bandages, hopefully you have like, uh, you know, just a bandana. Ooh, one of these is great. But even just a bandana if you're hiking, you can use two bandanas. Use one to like put on it and the other one to wrap around it and tie it. Um, you know, anything you can do to like not have it leaking all over and getting dirty. Um, all right, so we've probably, who's not right there? Cool. I have <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're like, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> 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 yeah. So, I mean, the biggest question is when you see a sprain, is it sprained or is it broken, right? Um, we honestly don't always know. We don't always know. I mean, that's why we order x rays sometimes. Um, but if you see this and they can walk, there's a good chance it's not badly broken, um, and if no one's going to come help you and you can't get anywhere else, you're just going to have to do your best. So, can you bear weight? So what? And then always looking for other injuries. Um, do anyone have crutches at their house? Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or canes yeah, or gave them whatever. Them. I think walking sticks. Sticks. Yeah. Sorry, we gave them to It'd be nice walk. to at least have a walking stick, right? Because they're cool. And also because you might need it for something like this. Um, I have random everything in my house, so if you need it, come over. Um, yeah, we have one that has a little thing for alcohol. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> You're not even, hey, I need that one. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Don't forget to put wine openers in your first aid kit. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Have a little whiskey. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Usually that's, um, and everyone kind of knows rice. Probably is rest, ice, elevation. Yeah. Rice. Um, yeah. The, it's, again, age advantages. Wonderful to have a walking cane, and it's like for pain because a lot of this stuff hurts. Um, yeah, and if it's broken and they walk down it, I mean, you'll find out eventually. Things back in the day, I mean, yeah, people, you know, sometimes they were gimpy. Hopefully, it won't be that bad. It's usually obvious if it's broken really badly, and then you won't let them walk, and they won't walk either. They won't want to. You get a compound fracture. Yeah, no, no, we'll try and no, walk. No, yeah, yeah, and you're gonna be like, dang, we have to get them. To help as soon as yeah. you can. Yeah. yeah. And there, that's why we have the hubs. And hopefully there'll be more and more hubs and we can help you there. Alright, so speaking of, um, anyone not broken a bone? <laughs> Alright, good. You've never anyone, broken anyone have a <laughs> anyone have a good story? Yeah. I don't know. My daughter my daughter, this could have been her. She was in a bouncy house and it was a birthday party mm -hmm. and it was windy mm -hmm. and we weren't paying attention and it blew up in the air. Oh, and oh, she the left. house, the, the whole years. bouncy house. Holy bathroom. It was awful, and I felt like such a bad parent because it wasn't really well secured. But um, so it blew up in the air. All the kids got dumped out, and she got dumped onto their walk, oh, like no. concrete oh. walkway, and broke her arms. Oh, oh no. my fortunately, God. didn't break her head. Right? Mm -hmm. She landed on her arms, and then her whole face got scraped. So mm -hmm. she broke her arms for a reason, and it was a good one. And I'm glad. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah, oh. both her arms look like that. Wow. I didn't really know for sure. I was kind of looking at her head and worried about that, but she kept crying, 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 and finally I said, "Okay, well, oh yeah, oh, okay. she had a cast on both, both arms. Oh. She was cool. That's cool. Oh. She needed help, you know. Oh. Um, but if they can't get seen right away for casting, we can still help them. 
little story. A friend of mine was out hunting about three or four miles back in the woods, and he jumped down into a little creek bed and broke his leg. Both? No, just one. Okay. And, yeah. And there's nobody going to find you because right. nobody knows you're gone because he didn't tell anybody. So he had to walk out broken or not. Oh, did he walk or crawl? Well, did he cry? He cried. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. It can get pretty tough. Yeah. So I mean, some of this. I mean, arms are the, the hope. You know, you hope they break an arm because then you can walk. Um, legs. I mean, you're gonna have to probably go for help to come transport them unless you can drive them somewhere. Um, I've got one little story. Yeah. Um, Many, many years ago, one of our sons was, was playing soccer, and there was a hole in the soccer field, you know, just a little hole in the field, and he ran over the hole, and, and uh, so the, the coach called us, and we, we went and got him, and I wasn't sure if it was broken or not, you know, uh, so I, I called the doctor, and the doctor said, well, there's two out of three symptoms, um, bruising, um, can't bear weight, or um, I forget the third one, maybe bleeding or, or, or something, yeah. I, I don't know. And, and, and Jared really didn't have two out of the three because I, he, yeah. could, he could walk on it, it hurt, yeah. it wasn't bleeding, and it was just very, very mild bruising. I did not take him in. Right. And three days go by, and he's going to school, you know, walking in this thing. Mm -hmm. And he, he's, but he's complaining of the pain. Yeah. Finally, you know, I, yeah. I took him in, and it was broken. Yeah. Paraline fracture, though, probably right. not. Right. It did not have exactly. to be in a boot. Yeah. 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 The non-displaced stuff can really trick you, and I think mm -hmm. you miss it sometimes. Like, yeah. I mean, sometimes they don't get seen, and like a month later, we see them or something, and you're like, oh, there's a healing fracture. You know, those ones make you feel like a parent winner. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it, yeah. you can walk on it. It's not, a, you know, it's not always obvious. So it wasn't, yeah, swelling, probably. Swelling Maybe swelling was, yeah. anyway, yeah. you know, and I felt like, well, the lesson for me there was to follow my gut. Yeah. Not necessarily mm -hmm. what I was told. Right. To just mm -hmm. take him in, what, yeah. you know. Yeah, and we'll say, say there's a, right. I'm sorry, you know, just don't let them walk mm -hmm. until you feel like <laughs> they're going to. Okay, it's, you know, if it's an adult, it's one thing, if it's a younger kid, you're like, uh, stay in bed, watch your phone. <laughs> it's not <laughs> the worst. Yeah, There's read a book. Tower. Tower. I know. Alright, so yeah, so pinpoint tenderness is one thing for bones. You shouldn't, you can't sprain your shin, you know, you can't sprain your thigh. There's no joint there. So if there's a pinpoint area that's painful, it might be broken. Um, it just doesn't usually happen. And if there's no, like, if you get stabbed, I mean, you should hurt there. Um, deformity is usually obvious, not always. Open wounds are kind of sketchy. So you talk about compound fractures. It can break, go through your skin, and go back in. Um, they won't want to walk. Um, but that is a possibility. And those are just a lot higher risk for infection, and they probably need an antibiotic. So depending on the mechanism, you're like, whoa, why is there a big laceration when you just fell in the hole? You know, like, is there something down here, or did that bone come oh, yeah. So you want to mm -hmm. take special care of that wounded area and continue to watch for signs of infection. So essentially, in that case, you'd want to be, you'd want to be immobilized as much as possible, right? And, right. And, and held Above, in place. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what the, I mean, for all these potential fractures, you want to, better safe than sorry, if you have something you can put them in, a brace or a boot or a splint, you want to do that. Um, otherwise, they just can't move at all. But, you know, without you can. The last one, why would you, so if someone's got a deformed arm, I mean, and it's obviously broken, this is when you'd see something like this, and their hand's turning white, it's not mm. good, right? Mm. That means that there's a compression of the artery. Um, and this is not fun, and I don't love doing it even in urgent care, but you gotta reduce it. So you gotta pull, they're gonna be mad. And you say, here's a whiskey, I'm gonna pull on your arm, which is broken, until I can make it look better. So you just basically support here, Go down there and you pull, and you just want it to get back into the semblance of an arm because you don't want their hand to. I mean, we don't mm -hmm. want to lose a hand because they could lose their ball. Yeah, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the same thing with the foot. I mean, ugh. but you got to pull on it even though it seems really wrong, and it's not going to be nicely aligned. It'll just be better. Um, we hate mm -hmm. we do, but it happens occasionally. Question. All right. So yeah, so you pull traction if you need it. Splint-wise, 
we talked about splinting a little bit. So things you can use um, besides a doctor -y splint. Um, lots of things. Um, cardboard tubes, you know, from wrapping paper, sticks. Um, if anyone's done any of the sort and wolfer courses, we just get creative. <laughs> um, you have, everyone has paper, magazines or whatever. I mean, all you have to do is roll up paper and it's pretty strong. Um, so if someone's got an arm that's broken, I didn't do this very well. Anyway, and you put it on both sides and wrap it with the ace, I mean, it's good. They won't be able to move it. Um, so it doesn't have to be fancy at all, and you're just doing the best you can do and trying to remind them it's not good. You shouldn't use this. We want to stabilize it. Um, you can do the same thing, you know, legs. Um, you don't want to, if someone might have broken this, you don't want to just immobilize their hand. You've got to do that above and below. It's a little confusing. If you hurt your shin, you don't want to move your ankle either because it wiggles mm -hmm. all the bones. So, it's going to be cumbersome. They're not going to want to walk on that splinted leg anyway, but it'll make things less likely to jiggle around if you can immobilize it, and then they can hop with the with walking stick. Um, anyone ever had to hike up very far like his friend? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It's, you can carry them, right? Um, we learn that in CERT and then we'll first stuff, but you can, there's ways. If you're out in the woods or you've got to walk them half a mile to the hub, do it even if all the trees are down. Just gotta work together. Let's see. Um, do they ever do that old fireman's carry thing with the? Yeah. Thing? Um. Sometimes we talk about that. There's just so many different ways. It depends if they can sit up right or if they're unconscious or you know if they can help. Back, piggyback. You know, it's easier than front. Um. What else? Splinted arm. Oh, buddy taping. I mean, broken fingers are the least of our worries, kind of in a major emergency. But it's still nice to not have it wiggle around. So um, it, you can put the hand on a ruler or a fork, or, you know, this, wrap it up, or tape it to the other next door neighbor, mm -hmm. finger or toe. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's always nice to have something to support your weight. Um, walker, if somebody leaves you a walker, you might as well stash it somewhere. <laughs> might need it. Any ideas otherwise? For splinting. So for the splint, it's both sides. I, I hadn't really thought about that. You do both sides yeah, of, of, yeah, of, of, of the limb. Yeah, it's some more support. Unless you've got the official fancy splints that are wide enough to at least support okay. it. Sometimes it's broken here, and so you feel like it needs both. You know, you just want to protect it um, and have it not move. Okay. There's lots of different, it, in Dr. Lamb, we have all our like, graphs and pictures of, okay, this thing's splint this kind of thing, but yeah. we just don't want to move much. So. Um, I got messed up on my slide here. One second. Okay. Okay. Burns. Um, so, anyone ever had a burn that was more than a summer? Mm -hmm. oh, and that was actually my husband. He was home with the cold and he set a book boiling tea, teapot on boil and then he dropped it. Uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, and he jumped, but just as he came down was when the water came out and went all over his foot, and he, he had uh, basically a second degree burn on about two thirds of his foot. And we actually he went to see the burn specialist the, and they put preparation. Take it off the keyboard. Take it off the keyboard. Oh, oh my god. Okay. Um, so teapot is bad. My husband had a um, teapot similar incident with Alfredo sauce. Uh, it's really bad. It's oily. Yeah. Yeah. Sticks to yeah. yeah, it was like it kept burning and burning, and you're like, oh no. Mm -hmm. All right, I might mess that up. Sorry. We'll just continue. So that was a picture of a blister. That's what degree burn? Third. Second. 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 Yeah. So when it it's not just a surface, but it goes into the second yeah. underneath layer. That's the second degree. Yeah, this old skin just came it off. It sloughs off. Yeah. Yeah. It's really yucky, and then it's going to be worse later. Um, I, there were really gross pictures of burns. I like, oh, uh, don't like them. I'm not going to put that up for you guys. They're awful. Um, and it's just something you really don't have, you really don't will ever want to deal with if you don't have to. And it, the younger, the worse they are. Just because skin is sensitive and soft and they're screaming like crazy. Um, so yeah, that's a time where I really like to have pain medication. Um, cold, just get it cold. 
as soon as you can. Like kill the running water. Yeah. Okay. And they're gonna wanna like stand in that ice. They're just gonna stay and not leave. It is just so painful. Yeah. Um, and there may not be ice, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the worst thing is wet potholders. Oh, you only have to do that once. Through. Yeah, oh, it right. immediately conducts. Oh God! I know. <laughs> oh. Yeah, lots of fun. I had I've only had chemical burns, like things leaked, or um, oh. as a doctor, you oh. an L and I injury. I like spill an acid solution for warts on my thumb. Oh jeez! Nice. Oh. Oh. So um, so we might not necessarily have ice or water handy. Right. Right. Yeah. Then what would you suggest? Then you just gotta get make the burning stop. So whatever's causing it, you need to get it off them. If there is a third degree burn, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll talk about a second and first, really. It's just about cooling with whatever you have. A aloe vera. I was just going to say, yeah. years Even ago in Hawaii, we yeah. had, at a drunken yeah. outdoor party, this woman yeah. fell into the bonfire and a piece oh. of styrofoam stuck to her leg. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody was actually brave enough to reach in and rip it off of her. Yeah. And it's like, okay, guys, it's two in the morning. Let's just find an aloe vera plant. Yeah. And we did, and she came out of it just fine. Yeah. yeah well, so elevator is good for first and second degree burns. Um, and you can buy that, you know, for your... Almost seems like keeping oxygen off of it. Yeah, anything that's going to touch it at all, it really yeah. sinks. But having it covered, usually, yeah. if it's a second degree, at least it'll keep the wind and the yeah. stuff from touching it. It's, it. There's nothing great about it. That's, that's pain all the way. Yeah. It's pain medication. And then there's another risk if it's open wound. It's infection. It's a big risk with burns. Mm -hmm. You've broken down your barrier. Um, so we usually put antibiotic ointment on all open wounds, like open burns, mm -hmm. every day and check it. Um, and third degree, oh my gosh, that's just the worst. I mean, the yeah. only good news is if it's only third degree and it's a small one, they won't feel it that much because they've killed their nerves. Nerve, right. But their danger is high in yeah. infection. And there's the rule of five. Like, it doesn't matter here. But anyways, a hand is 5% of your body's surface area. And that's a large burn. That's like go to Harborview if you have 5%. So you can imagine it means more. Yeah. It's really bad. Um, so hopefully that won't happen. You need fluid. If you see a five, if you see a hand sized burn that you're not sure if it's really deep or not, you need to get them somewhere to be cared for. They're going to need fluids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you're just seeping and oozing and losing mm -hmm. fluids. When you see birds, is there a, um, a typical cause a majority Let's see, water. yeah hot water. water yeah I mean the what we yeah. see yeah um, it's not usually a big fire right, right. um it's usually it's some a stuff. big teapot thing yeah. yeah and spilling things um I've been called you know they, on the ferry they, you ever hear them calling for an RN or doctor it's like coffee coffee um or oh. someone's piping hot tea oh. that they brought from home an yeah. amazing thermos <laughs> um, and then it's on their clothes, so you like, how you, they like, how you off? Right. Yeah, it's like, oh, so awkward. What do you think the Good Samaritan laws are going to be in a situation like this oh, when people do the best they can? I think you're fine. Yeah. You do the best you can, and you don't lie and say, I'm a doctor. Right. Oh, doctor. Listen yeah. to me. But you say, I'm, in, I'm a civilian, but I've had some first aid training. Do you want help? You want to ask them. Yeah. yeah. Um, because they can say no. Yeah. Um, I should That's right. You need to get consent first. Yeah. 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 Well, if they're conscious. If you can't yeah. get, if they can't get yeah. consent, you can do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. If they're unconscious. Yeah. If, you're, if they're unconscious, if they're it's unconscious. implied consent. That's implied. Yeah. 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 Um, if you're a medical provider, you have to stay with your scope of arms. So I'm not going to take out your appendix. Nobody would want that. Um, but I could On the them ferry up. floor or something? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, yeah. I could deliver the baby on the ferry. <laughs> <laughs> so can we all, or if we had to, right? Um, all right. Sorry, we're going to make it sound soon that I didn't fathom. So, let's see. Uh, last couple of things I want to make sure we thought about. Um, concussions. Are, are these on your website? Yes. Okay. Concussions. What's the um, If someone hits their head, I mean, has anyone had a concussion? Yeah. You just really want to keep an eye on them and let them rest and not have any stimulation. It'll be easy without power because there'll be no lights to read by and no TV to watch. What, what about, uh, my recollection is, oh, if head injury, don't let them sleep. And it's mostly checking on them. So, I mean, okay. yeah. And what are you going to do, honestly? If there's you nobody coming to your house. Away, right. If nobody's coming to your house and they've got a brain bleed and you don't know it, like, what is that about keeping somebody awake? What, is that true? Right now, here, if it happened at night, I mean, and they went to the hospital, they'd keep checking on them. If you're at home, I mean, people call me and say, you know, if they act weird, 
right now, if you're acting weird and stumbly and confused, take them to the hospital. We'll keep an eye on them. We'll keep them awake. You shouldn't have to. Like, I usually don't send people home and say, keep them awake. I'd say, let me keep them here and watch them. And you can go and sleep while I keep them awake. Um, it's mostly just to make sure nothing changes, because bleeds can be slow. And so, like Natasha Richardson. Yeah. 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 That's the that that worst, worse. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Can you talk about right? the eye test? Because I've forgotten sort of about the yeah, eye test pupils. And it's, is it just <coughs> but in general, or do you have to shine the light to get If I'm walking around with one pupil different than the other right now, you should not worry about me. It's if I'm on, I mean, if I'm out of it, then you're like, ah, that's really bad. But if you're normal, it doesn't matter if one people different. Anymore. You mean if you're acting normal? If you're acting normal and you're fine and I can do math mm -hmm. and tell you my birthday, I'm probably fine. Like, I might have had a weird pupil before. Okay. But if someone is acting funny and their pupils are valid, yeah. you're like, ah. I them. lost a lot of language for about four months. After your concussion? Yeah, I had yeah. some stitches. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope the penis bleeds. Um, Takes no symptoms for 24 hours. Sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a. Clue. Usually within 12. But 12. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's material. Material's fast. They're just, yeah, just not on. Yeah. I'm sorry it took so long. I feel like somebody's coming after me. Um, in the end, nobody's out there. Nobody is. Okay, well we'll keep going for a second. Um, hypothermia is another one. Hopefully not as much of an issue here in the Northwest, but if they fall in the water, it could be. Oh, yeah. Or if they get stuck outside um, and the car breaks down and they're wet. Um, the main things to know with hypothermia, and you never had it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what? Well, again, my husband had it. I, I had to get him undressed yeah. and get in under, under the yeah. blankets with him and hold him. Yeah. Did he have any symptoms, symptoms besides being cold? Yeah. Yeah. He'd been he out on a windsurfer for way too long. Yeah. 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 Was he acting different or? Yeah. 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 Did he think he was hot? I was compulsively shaking and couldn't yeah. stop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So I, I, in my the skate pack. I've got some of those hand warmer yeah. things. Yeah, those are good. Like, I'm not necessarily going to be able yeah. to boil water. Yeah, those are great. You can do those ice ones. So you can get the ice packs that break, and you can get the hand warmers. Well, but if somebody's really bad, I'd heard that you didn't want to like start over warming them. You that you wanted to naturally so, warm them, and mm -hmm. that like um, you don't want to warm their extremities. Yeah, um, you don't want to warm their core. core. Yeah, yeah. So warm their core, and um, if they're out, if they're dead looking, then just um, you know, just don't mess with them. Um, get them seen if you can. But, I mean, if this is a disaster and they're dead looking, we're probably gonna. Yeah, but you get the wet clothes off and put them in warm yeah. blankets. Just take right? off the cold stuff as soon as possible. Warm them up as best you can. Do it gradually, um, okay, and great. don't do the arms and legs. Do yeah. the core, and then, you know, groin. The pulses are nice. Like put it in the groin area and under the armpits. Those are nice. And then snuggle in there with them. Um, and then wound infections, again, if it looks red and oozy and gross and pus, it's obviously not good. Um, in that case, hopefully you have some antibiotics, at least to make an appointment. You kind of want to wash off the pus before you put it on. Gross. So if we have blood, wash off stuff. Um, so and if you don't have antibiotics, you would keep it clean keep and it hope clean. for the best? Yeah, keep yeah. it clean. If you have some for I mean, do what you can. I yeah. mean, they should probably be seen if it's not getting better in a day right. or two. Right. Or if they get a fever. Right. The red line. Normal mm -hmm. sailing. sailing. If, if you have those bottles of normal sailing yeah. around, sitting around your garage or whatever, oh, yeah. it's, good. it's better to rinse. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely like a wash with green um, All right, I think we're. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. That was a fun discussion. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we'll probably have longer classes at the library sometime in the show a few months, like where you actually learn things. <laughs> and how would we find out about this? They'll be, how do they do those library classes? I think they're going to be fair warning.